Okay, tonight, so we're gonna go through a few skills in rendering. Um, I'm gonna show you briefly how to do some basic rendering using both pencil only and marker. So first I wanna um, explain a little bit more about what I talked about in that skills building uh, little lecture about this difference between toluene and alcohol-based markers. So I've got a Sharpie pen that is a permanent pen and I have a sign pen, which is a non-permanent pen. So I've got a couple comparable colors here. The add marker um, is in a warm gray. So it's kind of just a neutral color. And then I've got a brick beige of Prismacolor. So this is a xylene based product, which is a bit more of a solvent in it versus an alcohol pen. So when I use a xylene based marker, it has a tendency to kind of erase lines. Uh, it also is pretty strong. So you can see as I'm, you know, marking across this, the water-based marker, the, the sign pen actually holds up in, in a response to a solvent pen. It doesn't start to mat, um, get smeared, but it actually, because it's a solvent, it'll actually dissolve a permanent pen. So it's kind of one of the quirks versus um, if I have a um, alcohol based pen, kind of does the same thing. So it doesn't, usually doesn't do it quite as much. Um, so if you know you're going to render directly on just original drawing, you might want to think about the alcohol markers. Also, if you're very sensitive to solvent smells, these xylene pens can really add up. I like the xylene pens because they have more of a watercolor effect. So it's a little bit softer of a color. Um, and if I was worried about my line weight, I could always turn the paper over and render on this side. And then I don't have to worry about smearing my pen. So that works well with something like Tish, a surface like this, um, where I can turn it over and render and still see the color through it. So Tish, you can almost not even, you almost can't even see the color on Tish. Um, it is a very light, light color. So here's a darker blue to give you an example of how that might look on a, the light a little bit better. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit better. Let's see. Um, you can see on the Tish, it's still a very light, almost pastel color. But if I were to put that on a piece of regular bond paper, it would be quite a vibrant blue. So you can see the difference of, you know, how the pens react depending on what color you're using. So I've given you a list of um, Jim Liggett's preferred pen colors, which are these chart pack markers. Um, but just, you know, to, to have on hand, um, if you wanna buy a handful of them, uh, you're probably ready. Um, I like to have a couple different blues, a, a kind of a medium blue and a lighter blue. I just grabbed these from my office. I was afraid of that. They're a pretty similar color blue, unfortunately. Um, not much difference in there. I like to have the medium and a light blue together. Um, I grabbed a purple just for some accents. Um, I like some of these buff or sand colors. Um, there's some nice warm gray colors. I like the warm gray, the light warm gray a lot. I use, a lot of times I'll use that as a base color and then go over it even with a colored pencil. So like even for brick, I will use a warm gray and then um, color that in with a pencil and it kind of gives a cohesive nature. So, you know, I've got a few different ones here. I would suggest a light warm gray and maybe one of the sand or buff colors. Um, a dark, cool gray is nice to have. We use that for shadows. It's almost a black. This is a cool gray number eight. And then I like to have a few greens that work well together. So in this case, I've picked a, a chartreuse, which is kind of a yellow green, which you can't see. Um, I have kind of a medium green that doesn't have quite as much yellow in it. And then I've got a very dark Green. So these are all in that middle green range, um, but I like to have a, a family of a few greens that work together. 
Now it could be a family of a few olive greens or a few of the more blue greens. It depends on what your preference is. Oh, and I grabbed another light lavender color just because I was going to play with that a little bit tonight. So those are just, you know, if you're going to grab a handful of pens, um, I would suggest something like that. Jim Liggett has some nice ones. These are kind of my, I would say my go-to pens. I don't need two purples, probably don't need uh, three beiges, but a few greens, a dark cool gray, uh, a light warm gray, kind of a beige or sand color, a couple different blues, and maybe an accent color like a purple or a red, whatever you're inclined to, um, are good starter, starter pens. Okay, so we've got a little rendering. I'm gonna put the pens aside for a minute, and I'm gonna move over to this little rendering that I will post online. You notice too that I always have this backer when I'm rendering. These pens bleed right through everything. So you're always gonna wanna protect the surface that you're drawing on. In this case, I have a piece of cardboard down um, before I start pens or you will have permanent rendered pen colors all over. So let's take a look at some techniques for how we might render just with pencils because that may very well be all you have at home. Um, so I've got my big box of different pencils. I always like to kind of have a scratch piece of paper um, beside me so I can kind of work out my colors before I start um, on my other exam on my other plan. So what I'm looking for is a couple blues that work well together. And you see, I've got kind of a light blue and a peacock blue. A little bit of a white would be a good thing. And so I'm gonna, so I see this is like a little house front yard. I see the roof line, little walkway. I've got this area, I'm gonna make this into water because a lot of people have questions about how to render water. Um, and then I've got some trees and some landscape. So we're gonna do a quick rendering first in pencil and then in pens plus the markers plus pencil over it. So when I do water, I think of kind of a gradient and I start first with, um, with two different colors of blue. And so I'm gonna make one corner, one side, my darker, deeper end. And I start by kind of layering color, right? So I go about two thirds of the way across with this blue. I'm starting first very lightly and I'm just kind of layering the color over the top, right? So building my, my layer of color. And as I get further away, it gets lighter and lighter. And then I'll come back and I'll really start to darken um, this edge over here. So almost like a shadow in this little pond where the edge of the wall is, right? So I'm just kind of layering that color and it's fading out into to white, so I'm gonna start layering, getting you know the layers built up, and then I'm gonna keep this kind of edge where it's darkest, and really build that up a little bit more so it seems to have some depth along the wall. Gets lighter as it fades up. And then um, I can, use a lighter blue and do the same thing. I'm not gonna put much color down on this because I'm actually gonna use a white and create like kind of a mirrored effect on this. So I'm gonna use a little bit of light blue and start to pull it down the other way. Um, but I really want this edge over here to be quite white. And so then I'm gonna overlay more white, a little bit heavier along the edge of that tree and create almost like a mirrored effect across that water. So it's kind of a gradient from darker to lighter. And so kind of, kind of can see that fading of this um, over in here. Sometimes I might take a little small thin pen if I can find my little pen. I can't find it at the moment. 
This isn't my littlest one. Um, so sometimes if I wanted to make it still water, I could put little, take my circle template and put rings using small, finding a center point and then creating some rings that, that get larger from that point. Or if I wanted to make it kind of flowing, I could just take the tip of my pen or a black pen and kind of just drag it along, give that water a little bit of movement. Something like that starts to create a little bit of interest and movement in that water. So see just a little bit of those flow lines in there, right? Coming across. Um, so I'm gonna work on trees. So with trees, I want a couple different uh, types of greens to use. So I'm gonna pick a little bit of a medium green, like an apple green, I think, and a darker, a darker medium green. This would be very spring-like, colorful. Um, I'm going to make the small trees, these kind of plain green trees. And I start to give also depth and dimension when I'm rendering, whether it's by pencil or marker, by layering my colors. And we do this with markers or pencil. So I've kind of put down one color of green. And then on the shadowy side, I don't have a north arrow. Um, so I'm just going to make my shadow over here. And I'm going to always make my shadows on the same side, but I am kind of creating this darker edge along here. So that starts to give depth and dimension uh, to my plain green tree. I'm going to do that more of my trees. If I want to be quick, I can just do the whole bottom in green. Tree production factory here. lines in my cardboard underlaying it. But. And I'm kind of putting those darker shadows on one side, just kind of filling this in. Okay. Okay, so darkening the edge. That's, that would be in shadow. Usually there's more shadow and more texture on that, that shady side of a plant or a tree. My big tree, maybe I want to make that a jonquironda, and that's where I could use um, some of my purple. Or actually, a lot of times we like to put a highlight of a yellow on the tree. So I'm going to find my canary yellow and I want to start to brighten these trees up. So right where the sun is kind of hitting the top, I might add a splash of yellow to just brighten that sun lit spot. If you think about a tree, right? tree in section, my sun is coming down and it's really making this spot my brightest spot. So that's gonna be the part where if I was drawing this in section, it's kind of the same thing where I have this base coat of color. I can brighten that yellow spot where the sun might hit it and darken the areas that are more in shade. Might look something like that. Um, whether you're in plan or section, that's helping that spot to be lit up by the sun and giving that more uh, depth and texture. So maybe I have an accent tree. It could be a fall tree, or if it's springtime, it could be like a jacaranda in bloom. So I can kind of do the same thing where I can create an accent color tree. So say this is a jacaranda. Right, I can really brighten, use purple 
um, to color it, I could come back with a dark green and make that, you know, kind of a highlight of purple. Um, I could also use a darker color of purple and just make it a completely purple tree. I'm going to use kind of that highlight here. So I apologize, there's a bit of lines because of the, the underlayment of the cardboard. So it's giving you those lines, but ignore the lines. All right. So we've kind of got a highlight there of a purple tree. We've got some water over here. Um, And I like to use just a, a plain beige uh, color, kind of a warm gray for my paving. And then if I, you know, I could have little paving stones maybe along in here um, that I would draw in by hand and I could start to individually highlight some of those. So I'm putting my base coat down. Normally we have our graphics done first, but I'll give an example of how if I had like flagstones, how we might highlight some of those. Again, normally your graphics are done first. You make a copy of your plan and then highlight away. So I've got a base coat here. Um, I might pick a couple colors like a brown and just kind of highlight different uh, stones. Maybe even one edge being a little bit darker than the others. I could even pretend it's a little bit of a slate color where I have a little bit of blue in that paving. Every once in a while, I could have a little bit of blue for comparison. Have more browns, it's just a tinge of blue to add some accent in there. Um, I've left some of this, the um, spots kind of open so that you can kind of almost have a highlight on those stones. You can see a couple, I, I put a little bit of blue in, so that provides some interest. A lot of these surfaces where we are um, spending a lot of our clients' money on, um, we tend to take a little bit more time with something like, like flagstone pavers. That's an expensive surface, so it's gonna um, cost a lot more money. So rendering it should read really well to help us be able to sell that kind of design. Um, shrubs are very similar to little trees. So I'm just gonna color a base coat of green here. And maybe I'll go a little bit darker with my, my shadow side. Make them a little bit different than the trees. Just giving them a little bit added dimension by kind of coloring the base, kind of the shadowy side of the plant. You notice I'm keep always keeping the shadow on the same side, whether it's a tree, the water, um, I always want that to read the same, so it starts to lift off and give a little bit of depth to those items. Darker side of the stones, everything's kind of falling in the same direction. So, here's my wall. I'm going to make this kind of a darker brown so that it stands out a little bit, still kind of cord correlated with my Paving, so it's kind of a color family. Flat kind of tops, so we've got a little water feature in there. Um, save, that, save it, this is a lawn. So 
Maybe I'm gonna go to an even more yellow green for the lawn. Okay. Color this whole thing in. So the concepts and how we start to give a two-dimensional graphic and uh, are the same, where we start to create this roundness and this third dimension on a flat plane of paper are the same, whether we're using pencils or pens. So remember those concepts of putting these shadows in areas that are, you know, pick, pick a shady side, North side is the shady side of plants. So some firms shade scientifically north. So whichever side is north is the shadowy side. Many firms like to, their graphics to read really strongly. So they tend to pull the shadows to the lower uh, left or lower right corner consistently. So I've kind of, I don't have a north arrow on this. So I'm just doing this kind of graphically. So I've got this kind of base coat uh, set out for of this, this kind of yellow green for the lawn. And I'm just gonna um, kind of bring, I'm gonna make some of it a little bit darker. So I'm going the next shade darker on some of the areas. I think of it as a whole big long plane like the water. So I'm laying a gradient across it. We're just bringing this down, giving a little bit more depth. And then this area is a little bit brighter. So maybe the sun's coming this way. So I might overlay this with some yellow and really brighten that up and kind of pull some of that yellow down in here. So it starts to blend across and becomes a gradient of colors. And that starts to provide some interest and some, you know, like light grazing off a surface. Let's see if I can get that closer. It's hard to see. The camera doesn't pick it up that well. Um, but you know, a nice technique in there. Now for the roof lines, same as here, I would look at which are gonna be the areas in shadow or the darkest. So that's gonna be this plane here. It's gonna be this plane, if I'm going to that lower corner, it's gonna be this plane right here. Um, this is gonna be in light, because I got my light coming this way. This is gonna be light. Um, and this is gonna be kind of medium. So that'll be light. This will be darker, darker, pretty dark. You know, that's kind of in the same plane in shadow and these will be medium. So um, we can mimic that with, usually with one color um, and different, different depths of that color. Or sometimes we use a pencil to highlight over the top of it. So this is kind of one of my darker planes right here, right? So I'm just gonna put a base coat down first of what areas that are darkest for me. And then I might come back and add texture or darken them even further. Okay, dark. Dark, dark, light, 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 and then kind of medium. So I'm going to carry this across. I'm going a little bit lighter on this medium. This is going to be darker. Again, these weird lines are from the cardboard underneath. So we're just gonna work with it. But that is what's causing that. And then here's my lightest areas. So I'm gonna keep the, that really light, just barely putting any lead down on that. Kind of keep track of where these light areas are. 
Pencils work really well too. If you don't have a lot of time, they're a pretty quick uh, method to get color on a paper. Let's see. I know I have kind of a green or cream color. I don't see it tonight. My favorite to brighten things up. Sand. Green's my go to color for brightening. It's a little bit yellow. Hmm. Good idea. I'm gonna try this. Oh, it's pretty dark. All right, I'm gonna go with the sand. So again, what the idea is that there's some warm sunlight um, hitting these planes, um, kind of brightening these up a little bit. And then these darker planes, maybe on this, I'm just going to add some texture to this. What happens is when things are in shadow, they tend to have, they have a lot more depth and texture to them. So I'm just adding some, like we did with line weights, the first class. I'm, I'm just adding a little bit of texture and me, making it look a bit more like a roof. I'm going to be going kind of parallel so that you know shingles would be laid uh, in a rows they wouldn't start to cross and I'm not you know for the render I'm just really trying to give it some texture so I'm not really being conscious to draft these that's kind of my more artistic style So it's giving some texture to those areas. And then I think for my kind of medium areas, I'm just gonna smooth out some of the, some of the color here and make it a little bit smoother. I wish there weren't these lines in it, but we'll do what we can. So that this just becomes kind of a medium. I even put a few little lines in here, but they're going to be spaced further apart. So we start to get some depth on that roof with where the different planes are hitting. Um, and so you can kind of see that that's starting to lift off the ground a little bit. And the last thing I'm going to do when showing this pencil rendering is to actually make some shadows. And I find that as students are beginning students, they always hate to do this part, but this is really what's gonna start to lift the design of the paper and make it kind of three dimensional. So the same side that's in shadow, I'm gonna create a little outer moon shape of kind of a, a black or a dark gray color. And that's going to help that lift right off the paper. Now, I'm not going to take the time to fill in every bit of ground cover because I want to cover both of these demos and not take hours. Um, but if you're designing a plan, you won't want it. Once you start rendering, you're going to not want to leave white unless intentional. White is a very strong color. So it draws eyes to, to the spot. So um, I'm going to add some shadow. And you guys will get a good idea of how this looks. And then we'll do the same practice rendering with marker and pencil. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow on this wall too. Lift that off the ground. Two corners. A little, little bit of... Um, I could put it on the building too. Gives it a little bit of 
depth. So again, as much as people hate putting black on there, I think you'll see it starts to give that dimension. So be brave, add the black. So now you can see that's starting to really lift off the paper with the shadows and start giving it that three dimensional, dimensional feel to it. Wish the camera was picking up a little better. It's washing things out a little bit, but hopefully you get a bit of an idea. Okay, moving on to our version with pens. I'm gonna put this hoping it'll smooth it out a little bit. And we're gonna do the same thing all over again. So I've got my two blues. They are unfortunately very close together in color. So that is unfortunate. Usually I take a, a lighter blue and a darker blue, but we will work with it tonight. And I'm gonna color my little water feature in. So you can see that how quickly the add markers, they just kind of bleed out. It's very watercolor-like and that sometimes makes new designers crazy. But as you get to be older designer, it just becomes artful and it's all good. So on this, I'm gonna put a little bit of this darker color right where I know I'm gonna make this a little bit darker. I wish this was a little bit shade darker than that but it's not. So we will correct that with pencil um, when we overlay the top. I'm also going to color my lawn. So again, I'm gonna use that very chartreuse green pen. It's almost dried out, but we'll do what we can. Now I, I'm leaving the trees intact, so we will, The trees are layered on top, so I'm, I try not to, I missed it there, but I try not to color inside the trees. Probably a good idea to do trees first if you're using markers. So this pen's on the verge of drying out. After this session, I will toss it and get a new one. That's what's creating all these lines and it's not a smooth application, quite like the blue um, on it. All right, so oh, trees, that's a bit dark, okay. All right, well, should test the back color first. That's okay, we will brighten it up. The good thing about using pens and marker is that you can correct most boo-boos with the pencil overlay. So those are a bit darker than I would have liked, but that's okay. I can brighten it up with putting pencil over the top of it. Apple tree. Well, I'm make this a complete purple jacaranda tree in my landscape. I've got an even darker green, so I'm just gonna put a little bit along this edge. Although this is so dark, it may not show. So what I'm doing is just putting my base coat of colors down first, and then I will come back with pencil. My warm gray here. Okay. 
actually going to make my walls all the same color because again I will overlay with pencil to really start to differentiate these. Okay. Um, stick with the light green color. Trebs, this other were a bit dark. Last little bits of my pen here. And little shadow sides on these. So I, when I render by hand, I tend to use the pens. Um, on a rare occasion, I will use pencil only, just the way I was trained. All right, so I'm gonna brighten up. So now, so actually I'm gonna do some of the fine lines. If I wanted to, Someone is going to ask how to do the thing with the rings, so I'll do that on this particular one. Um, so I might set a point on this small little area, the center. And I tend to not do completely filled in. Um, so then I'm going to go to a next bigger circle circle template that's a few. You know, a bunch of sizes bigger. That. And I might go up bigger. Right. That. I might go even bigger. A bit bigger. So it's like a ripple in a pool. I'm kind of lining up the center, but then those start to radiate out bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's see. Bigger than that. I could even go all the way up to this one if I wanted to. Like that. So that's how you could do rings of water. If you wanted it to be kind of more, um, you know, a little bit of movement that way. And let's draw some of those same vibes down. Again, normally you would have these drawn on your base plan and then be just you know, have copies of that. So they'd already be inked in. Try and give you. Okay. All right. So a few colors here. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with pencil and that some of these were gonna be totally this kind of darker brown color. Some of them just the edge would be that darker brown. Some might have a little bit of blue. Just to add some variety. Um, you could use purple, you could use an orange, whatever your, your stone color might be. Probably has different highlights in it. Make the rest of these just kind of a brown. I've left some of these with highlights, so I could come back with kind of that yellow, or I really like cream for highlights. I don't happen to have it in my pencil box, because I like it so much I always use it. 
um, but you could start to kind of brighten those up. You can see that. Now I mentioned kind of color correcting my dark green trees. So I can brighten those up a little bit. Um, so I can put a lighter green over the top to give them a little bit more pizzazz, more like my pencil color. What I like about pencil over marker is it adds a bit of texture to it, kind of layers things up. So I'm actually going to make my kind of bright yellow spot and brighten these trees up. And then I'm still going to darken the edge of them. Because again, I'm, I'm adding kind of texture on that too. All right, add a little texture here on these. I think these guys pop out a little bit more than just the pen. Mary, I have yellow a lot, so I'm going to brighten. That works a lot better than the other one. The other yellow I put on these. These popped out. A little bit. Shrubs are starting to really pop off the ground. Now I'm going to take this color and I'm going to make this a little bit darker and pull that base color down a little bit. Again, kind of working a gradient onto this. This is my darker edge. And then I'm going to have my yellow over this side. That's going to be kind of my brighter. It's like a wash of sunlight across the grass coming under this tree to brighten that up a little bit. Pull it down into this where it's starting to blend the two together. Uh, let's see. With these, I want to do my water. I'm going to use a white. A little bit darker of a blue. Same kind of gradient. I've got my darker blue overlaying this. And I'm going to make a gradient. I'm going to start first by going about two thirds of the way. And it's going to, I'm easing off on the pressure as I get over here. And this edge is going to be my darkest edge where it's kind of more in shadow. So think of a gradient of color across that marker. And then in this corner is where it's gonna be lightest. So now I'm gonna take a white pencil and brighten up this corner. And the idea is that it kind of should look like a bit like a mirror when you're done. And I'm gonna blend that across. This, I can really whiten it up again, creating Real gradient across this. Something like that. Okay. And then for my junk around that, I like sometimes I like to stipple um, leaves. So I'm going to take this really dark purple. And a lot of texture. Make it really dark along the edge, less dark here. I still have that center part that's light. I'll go over that with a purple color too. Brighten it up a little bit. 
So kind of building up these layers of color across it. Well, I'm not gonna put yellow because yellow is a complementary color to um, purple. So I'm actually gonna use a white. Normally I'd use a cream, which is a little bit more white to brighten this up. If I start putting a complementary color, it tends to make it muddy. So I'm just going to brighten up this edge a little bit. Uh, make that kind of a hot spot where the sunlight is hitting it. What else have I got to do here? Normally, I will do a light overlay, you know, on the uh, paving in the grout. So, you know, I could take like a color about the same color as the pen and just give it a little texture over the top. I could also highlight these steps, make a little shadow line down below them. It starts to lift those off the ground. Um, for the roof line, same thing. I'm going to use that same warm gray. I'm just going to do the whole area in warm gray. I'm be very careful with my pen. That's okay. It's artistic. Okay. So generally then I would come back with the, pen, the pencils and work on that darkening just like I, I did when I was doing pencil only. So this being kind of the dark end, you know, make that a bit darker. Same here. This is a dark end. This is kind of a dark side. This is my bright, my bright. So um, I might I might just go with kind of a a different pencil color on those edges actually. I want it really washed out. Use a little bit of bowl. A little bit. Here. Here I might just do the the wash. This is my mediums. Light color. Here. And then I would definitely darken this more dark sides. Obviously, if this is my final project, I'm taking a bit more time. I'm trying to not keep you or I on here for hours, but you can kind of play with these levels. I always like to print a couple different plans so that way, you know, you can practice on one and then get your technique down and then put it over on the, the main, your final one that you're gonna turn in. So similar in that you start getting this kind of depth in the roof, the roof colors. Um, the last thing we're gonna do is add some shadows to those trees. So with pens, I like to use that very dark gray color. And I'm just gonna create this kind of, boundary shadow around it right through my water that I worked so hard on. That's okay though, because it's going to give it depth and it's actually going to make that water look better. I could do the same with these shrubs if I wanted to give them a little more depth. 
can do the same with the walls. Need a little bit more depth there at the edge of the house. All right. And last thing, since I bled my blue all over my wall, I'll probably just add some brown in there and disguise that so no one will ever really know. Water spilling out of my... That's the nice thing about pencils. Is you can, as long as you don't color your hardscape green, you can hide a lot of things. So again, there's kind of a, a view with marker and pencil overlay. I'm sorry that the quality of the camera is not as great as I would hope. And then here's kind of the same thing with just the pencil overlay. So a little bit of quick rendering tutorial for you guys so you can get through this small courtyard assignment with some color. All right, enjoy coloring. It's the most fun part of the project.